Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to tell you how you can learn English fast. And actually this technique is not just for learning English, it's for learning any language that you want. It's the technique that I use to learn French and it's the technique that I am currently using to learn Spanish. And as you know, I speak French now, uh, that's my second language and I'm gonna learn my third language. Well, I'm in the process of learning my third language. and. I'm I can testify that this technique works. So I'm going to share this technique with you in the hopes that you can learn English this year if it's one of your goals or Spanish or French or whatever you're looking to learn, this technique is going to help you. So what's really cool about this technique is actually it's really simple. Everybody who wants to learn a language wants something simple, fast and easy. It's not that we don't want to work hard, it's just that with the, all the demands of everyday life, we've got to work, studying, families, social life, etc, etc. We have a lot of things to do in our daily life. We don't have a lot of time and so we really need to maximise the time that we do have, even if it's just a really small amount of time. So for example, if all you can manage is 15 minutes a day, that's okay, it's manageable with this technique. However, you do have to be consistent, okay? So with this technique, consistency is really the key and consistency is the key actually to learning any language and actually to learning anything or to be able to progress or to be able to become advanced in something even if it's just something like skateboarding practicing consistently is the thing that's actually going to push you and to help you to develop and become really really good at it so what are the four key steps of this technique i know you're dying to know so let's get started number one the first thing that you need to do before you learn any language is to learn the pronunciation of the language why because because if you start to learn new vocabulary or you start to learn new phrases and you don't say them right or you can't pronounce them right, it's just pointless. You're learning new words and you're learning phrases that you are still not communicating what you want to say. The person who speaks that language won't understand what you're saying. And then after you have to retrain yourself to say all these things in the right way, it's a pain in the ass. It's just not worth doing. It's not worth learning all of this stuff unless you actually know how to pronounce it. So for me, with Spanish, I found a fantastic course with Baselang. This is not sponsored or I'm not being paid for this, by the way. This is just my opinion. Uh, I found a really good uh, course with Baselang and it is a pronunciation course. It takes you through all the basics of the pronunciation of Spanish, including stuff like double letters, vowel sounds, and all of the different ways in which we pronounce certain words. I'm gonna put that in the comments below. So if you're learning Spanish, you can look at that because that will help you. If not, even if you're not learning Spanish, click on it and have a look at that because that's the kind of thing that you are looking for before you start to actually learn your language. So if you're starting to learn Japanese, you need to find a course like this Spanish pronunciation course at Baselang to help you to learn the basic pronunciation of Japanese. Once you have your pronunciation down, you're going to be able to recognize words more, you're going to be able to recognize how to pronounce stuff and the language actually becomes more natural and more easy to understand because you're looking at a word and you kind of have an idea of how you're gonna pronounce it rather than looking at a word and thinking, I have no idea. For example, when I started to learn some basic Czech, obviously in English, we don't have the same accents on the letters as the Czech language does. So when I was looking at the word, I was just like, I have no idea how to pronounce this word. There's an accent there, there's an accent there, there's an accent there, I have no idea. So I just pronounced it in English. English way but that's not how the word sounds and so therefore I'm not going to communicate well with the word. So I really needed actually to do a pronunciation course so I could understand how to pronounce a word before I learn the word. I know that when you start to learn a language it's so exciting. It could be really easy to convince yourself that this part of learning it's the boring part, it's not important, you know you procrastinate, you don't really want to do it but the thing is if you start to learn a new language and you don't have this basic part of the language down like the actual pronunciation it's going to make everything so much harder really Believe me, trust me, I've been there. So take my advice and find a pronunciation course to help you understand how to speak and pronounce and kind of instinctively know how to pronounce words when you see them. 
Okay, number two, once you're sure that you know how to pronounce stuff, or you kind of have an idea of how things are spelled and how things are pronounced in reference to the spelling, then you are going to find a frequency list. What's a frequency list? So a frequency list is a list of the top most used words in the language. So for example, you can find the 1,000 most commonly used words, or the 2,000 most commonly used words, or even the 5,000 most commonly used words in the language. However, I recommend starting with 1000 because 1000 is going to give you a really good basic knowledge of the language. These 1000 words are the most commonly used words in the language and there is a thing called the Pareto Principle which is where 20% of the effort leads to 80% of the results. So actually don't you think it's better to learn a smaller amount of words that you're actually going to use a lot or that are going to pop up more frequently than to learn 1000 random vocabulary that you may never use? It seems more useful to learn the top 1000 used words in conversation or in the language because then I know I'm actually learning words that I'm going to use. For example, all of those small words like a, the, an, to, in, on, these kind of words are all going to come up in this frequency list. And when you know these words, you're gonna have a fantastic base knowledge of the language. So this is really, really important. And it's much more important than learning a whole list of vocabulary related to sports or related to, I don't know, something that's not really useful. And this is something at school that's quite difficult. We are given long, long lists of words of vocabulary to learn, to like rehearse or to, to memorize but we don't actually really use them all or we don't find them useful. Actually, we learn it, but then we never use it. So it doesn't seal the information in our brain and this is kind of pointless. So finding a frequency list is going to be your best bet and it's going to give you a really, really good base knowledge of the language. And from there, once you have a solid base, you can build on that and you can add the vocabulary that you need. So for example, in French, every time I go to a new situation, for example, maybe going to a concert or going to the hospital or going to talk to even the local government services, in these situations, it's something new. It's something where I may rehearse or the conversation beforehand, or I may learn the vocabulary beforehand so I know what they're talking about or so I know how to express myself. But it's probably not likely that I'm gonna learn a whole long list of words related related to a government service at school or myself because that's very, very specific vocabulary. And until I actually need it, what's the point in me learning it? It's the same thing for basic phrases. If you know that you're going to go to the pharmacy, learn some basic phrases for the pharmacy. This is what I did. In France, they have a very specific process of going to the doctor and then going to the pharmacy to pick up the medication that you need. So I learned the vocabulary and the phrases beforehand so I could then go to the pharmacy and I could say exactly what I needed to say. But there was no point in me learning all of that before I even came to France or even used these kind of services because why would I need to know that when I'm not going to actually use it? So the key is here to actually learn vocabulary you're going to use because then you're going to stay more interested and you're going to actually come across it more often and it, then that's going to seal it in your brain every time you use it. If you're learning really random vocabulary that you never use, like I don't know, book it, for example, perhaps you learn the word bucket, but how common is it to use the word bucket? You know, you're not going to remember that. So it's better for me to learn the word bucket when I get an apartment and I go to the supermarket to buy new cleaning products to clean my new apartment. I think, hmm, what do I need? I need a mop. I need a broom. I need a bucket. You see where I'm going here? I'm going to learn that vocabulary before I go. So that's tip number two. Tip number three is that it can be so overwhelming when you look at learning a language and you see all the tenses, especially in French, because we have conditional tenses, uh, like subjunctive tenses. Uh, yeah, it's, it can get really, really complicated. So the key is stay calm. And like I've already said, we're gonna do basic stuff, okay? Because basic tenses are going to get you pretty far. Even if you need a more complex tense, we can communicate, we can express ourselves with the basic tenses. So the first thing that we're gonna learn is the present tense. After that, you're gonna learn the past tense and then you're gonna learn the future tense, okay? So make sure that you know how to say, I go, you go, and they go. I went, you went, and they went. And then future tense, I will go, you will go, they will go. These three forms of each tense are going to really, really help you at least be able to say I and you 
because those are the most commonly used. Don't get too complex, just start with the basics and from there we're gonna build on it. If you don't have the basic knowledge or if you're going too complex and you don't really understand, you're gonna get really discouraged and you're gonna feel bad and you're not gonna feel very confident in yourself. It's really, really critical that we stay basic so then we can build upon our basic knowledge. So the past, present and the future tense, just the simple tenses are the most useful and the most important. So you're going to learn that before you move on. And my last tip is as you start to learn the language, it's so, so important to actually speak. Okay, you have to speak because you have to seal the language into your brain. Yes, you can learn all the theory and really I am somebody who is the proof of this. When I arrived in France, I had all the theory of French and being able to speak French. I knew all the tenses, I knew a lot of vocabulary, I knew things in theory, but when it actually came to speaking, it was really, really, really hard because I could not speak. And I could not understand what people were saying because they were speaking too fast or they had accents or they were saying things in a way that I didn't learn because you learn the basic simple pronunciation, but actually not everybody speaks like that. It's really, really important that you get some sort of process in place for speaking. One of my best recommendations is the Tandem app because it's free, first of all, and because you can connect with people all over the world and speak to them. So for example, if your native language is French and you're learning Spanish, you may be able to find somebody in Colombia who speaks Spanish natively, but who is also learning French. So you can pass 30 minutes speaking French with them and then they can pass 30 minutes speaking Spanish with you. So that's my, my top recommendation for, for talking apps. There's also other apps like italki, but these are paid. And uh, I think it's important that when you first start to learn a language, you don't spend too much money. In fact, you really try not to spend any money at all because to get a basic knowledge, you can teach yourself, you can do it for free. So there's no point in spending money, especially if you don't have any money or if you're a student or if you are somebody who is starting a life in a new country, perhaps you have a new job and you're not really very stable, whatever the reason, it's better to be able to, well, just do things for free. <laughs> until you really, really need to spend money. One more resource that I absolutely loved when I was learning French was Memrise. It's kind of a bit like Duolingo, which is where a lot of people start to learn a language. Duolingo is very, very simple, I find, and it doesn't really explain things very well. And I find it also um, uses a lot of sentences which are really pointless and useless. Like the apple was big or the pig ate the apple. Like this is pointless to me. I, I'm not interested in this and it's not useful. Um, I ended up using Memrise a lot and Memrise was really, really useful because it's like Duolingo, but I find it has a lot more information. It's a lot more easy on the eyes, I find. Um, and it's really, really good because you can download frequency lists on there and then you can just like Duolingo, it's a bit like flashcards, you know, you revise your words and then it's spaced repetition, basically. That has really, really helped me a lot to be able to learn French. Another thing that's really useful is podcasts, especially the Coffee Break series. Coffee Break French is so, so good. I, I'm amazed that it's free. And then there's also Language Transfer, which is a free podcast or a free, um, it's on SoundCloud, It's there's a website and I think it's on Spotify or it's like on podcast apps. Uh, it's free, done by one guy and it's amazing. It teaches you all the basics of the language. This could be a really, really good way to start to learn about a language and to also supplement your learning at the same time. The Spanish one, it was like absolutely amazing. I learned so much. I still haven't finished it, so maybe I'll review it at the end, but I find that that resource is like, the fact that it's free is such a high quality resource. I really recommend that you go and check it out. It's called Language Transfer. But anyway, I'm gonna put all of the links in the description so you can go and have a look and click on it and you know, and then hopefully you can take this method as well and you can start to learn English this year or Spanish or Japanese or Chinese or Polish or whatever you're learning. Hopefully you can take this technique and you can actually just launch yourself into the language and really enjoy the process of learning. So I really hope that this has helped you. If you have any, uh, suggestions as well for apps or anything else. Let's all help each other out. Leave them in the comments and if you have anything that you want me to cover in another video to help you with pronunciation or maybe the difference between two words or tenses or absolutely anything, I'm here to help you. I really, really love to help other people to improve their English. And remember to click subscribe, very important, then you're gonna get my videos in your inbox every single time I post. And if you have Instagram, go follow me on Instagram. It's at the underscore cosmo 
Cosmic Traveller with two L's, not one, because I am British, so I spell it the British way. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Remember to click subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Mwah.